Welcome back. Now, this week, Tanzania hosted the 50th anniversary conference of the Institute of Adult Education at the Julius Nyerere International Convention Center in Dar es Salaam. Now, amongst the distinguished voices at the conference was Namibia's Dr. Shadrach Panduleni Shiomeka, media ombudsman of Namibia and senior lecturer at NAS. Dr. Shiomeka delivered a keynote presentation titled The Role of Artificial Intelligence in Adult and Lifelong Education in the Digital Era. Tonight, we get an exclusive chance to unpack his experience at this la uh, landmark uh, event. Dr. Shiomeka, good evening and welcome to the Daily Roundup. Uh, good evening and a good evening to the viewers. Well, to start with, congratulations on representing Namibia at such a milestone uh, international event. What was it like uh, for you to deliver this keynote at the Institute of Adult Education's 50th anniversary conference? Uh, Nina, I have to start by saying I really have to thank the uh, management and uh, senior leadership of the Institute of Adult Education in Tanzania for picking Namibia to be one of the countries that will deliver keynote uh, addresses. It was Namibia and it was also Botswana because I was together with the vice, uh, deputy vice chancellor of the Botswana Open University. Uh, in my case, it was like a key recognition. Uh, it is a recognition and a great respect for Namibia's work in terms of how we are, you know, educating and sharing knowledge about the role of uh, AI or artificial intelligence in adult education and lifelong learning, and how we are, you know, extensively engage the public in terms of, you know, ethics around uh, the AI usage. Mm -hmm. At this specific conference, yeah, especially yesterday when we had the opening, we had a great chance to meet with the Prime Minister, Honorable Kasim Majaliwa of the Republic of uh, Tanzania. We also had the chance to have the Minister of Education, Science and Technology, Professor Adolf Mukenda, and also joining us was the Permanent Secretary of the Minister of Education, Professor Caroline Nombo, as well as former Minister of National Education, Ambassador Nicholas Kuhanga. Mm -hmm. So to me, it was an achievement, it is a recognition, and I can see, you know, uh, adult educators uniting to see how AI ethics can help us to shape adult education because an educated adult is an empowered citizen. Can you give us the essence of your message, um, AI in adult and lifelong education, and, and why AI is such a, a game changer in the space? Yes, my key message was uh, AI is here to stay. And there are a lot of people that have got, you know, misconceptions, or maybe we can call them myths about the usage of AI and how does it contribute, you know, to education, especially adult education in formal and non-formal settings. Uh, the reason why I am saying, you know, my, uh, my key message, it was very strong and powerful and impactful and relevant at this specific platform is because AI is the one that adult educators can make use of to generate the content. And they also AI has got abilities, you know, to do an assessment of your knowledge gap or the skills gaps that you have and provide solutions. And you can ex access AI anytime from wherever you find yourself, meaning that AI now will replace our physical libraries that we used to have. And with AI, you do not require somebody to be there to tell you when to learn and what to learn and how to learn. Uh, you, AI can always you know, direct you on how to do those things. What was more important is that we really have to be cautious when we are accessing you know, or using AI in adult education, especially for informal and non-formal our learning because there are so many issues that are involved the issues of privacy mm -hmm. issues of human rights violations issues of consent and also issues of you know using it you know uh, irresponsibly because if we are not using it responsibly and wisely for the benefit of ourselves as individuals we will end up not learning anything and Nina, I would like to quickly just draw your attention to the reasons why so many people had had negative perceptions and attitudes toward the graduates of that are coming from these education institutions. Mm -hmm. It is because they strongly believe that these people is not themselves who have you know done the assignments or written examinations. Mm -hmm. 
And with AI, it's the same thing that people are thinking that, you know, those that are using AI, they are likely just, you know, to instruct AI to give them answers. And if both educators and students or learners, they are not careful, it is likely chances are high that you produce people who do not have the content, they do not have knowledge, they do not have the skills, but they do have degrees and certificates. That makes them to be irrelevant in the industry and they'll find it difficult to make an impactful, you know, uh, uh, impact in the society or wherever they'll find themselves. You, you raised, Dr. Shiomeka, some striking questions in your keynote, such as whether we're educating for the dustbins or for future generations. Can you expand on that thought and, and what did you mean? How does this fit in uh, to the AI challenge? Yes, um, it well fit. It, it's even going hand in hand with the theme of the 50th anniversary of the Institute of Adult Education in Tanzania. Um, uh, so much so that, you know, if we educate or with, if we use AI irresponsibly, irresponsibly, I, I mean, if we let AI do the work for us, not us using AI so that at least AI will be an enabler. AI should be a guiding tool. But a number of us, if we are using AI to do work for us, and I even made it clear in my presentation that AI can give you information that you request from it, but AI will never study on your behalf. Therefore, if you use AI and you get knowledge, you are chances of you getting wrong knowledge. Yes, you will work out with something, mm -hmm. but it will be wrong knowledge. Mm -hmm. It will be wrong skills that you are going to have. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it will lead to what we call regressive learning. Because what you wanted, you wanted to acquire knowledge and skills and competences that will uniquely identify you and help you to make an impact in the society. However, a lot of people now are using AI to do things for themselves. Remember, AI will not know your context. They yeah. don't even go through from what they are getting from AI. Mm. They don't even check authenticity of that AI. And therefore, we really need to be accountable to what we, the type of knowledge that we are acquiring, because it is the one that is likely to throw us in the dustbin. In the dustbin, I mean, you will find yourself irrelevant. You know, you have knowledge that you have acquired, but that knowledge is irrelevant. Mm. And then nobody will make use of you, and then nobody will even seek for your assistance or professional help because they can see that, of course, you are certified. But that is a person who cannot make a meaningful impact in the society. Yeah. And then we have so many people of such nature. It is probably because they did not do it responsibly and wisely, and I am urging people to use AI responsibly, wisely, and we should be cautious on the type of you know, content yeah. that we find online. Yeah. You also spoke about the myths around AI, for instance, that it replaces humans. Why do you think these misconceptions, you know, persist? And what is the reality? Yes, uh, you know, what, 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 what people have been saying is that, you know, and this is also came out, you know, during the conference, you know, not only during my presentation, but several papers that are being uh, presented under this specific uh, sub theme of, you know, uh, 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 technology in adult education and lifelong learning. The misconception is there because people think, you know, probably, you know, AI will completely replace you from your workplace from all the activities and initiatives that you are doing. Mm -hmm. What they do not know is AI is not here to replace you. AI is here to assist you so that you will improve your productivity and efficiency and effectiveness within that specific organizational setting. So if you are thinking like AI is completely replacing you, it is replacing you because you also failed to make yourself relevant. Because with the development and emergence of AI, there are new job opportunities that are coming up. And those new job opportunities, they just, you know, requires you as a citizen, responsible citizen who is willing to learn, to also deviate 
and also equip yourself with the current skills that will help you to function with that specific society, then you will not find yourself irrelevant. Yeah. So therefore, that myth is there that it is here to replace us. But my message is AI is here as an enabler, is a guiding tool. Let us learn how to use it as a supporting tool, but not, you know, a tool, you know, to do everything for us without us engaging in it. I made a joke today when I said, you can be replaced because yes, you wanted to be replaced or you never knew that you can be replaced because you do not know yourself. You don't know your competencies, your knowledge deficiencies or skills deficit. Mm -hmm. Dr. Shiomeka, adult education in Namibia has historically, you know, faced challenges from high illiteracy levels to, to limited resources within the rural areas. Now, based on what you presented, how can AI practically, um, you know, help close those gaps and make lifelong learning more accessible? Yes, for example, if we are looking at the type of learning that takes place, you know, structurally, where there should be a curriculum and an institution, and sometimes there should be a tutor or somebody that's guiding you in the work. Previously, we have been institutions such as University of Namibia. We have seen that the Namibia University of Science and Technology has been doing that. They had, you know, regional centers, you know, across, you know, the country, and they have to make sure that there's a physical facility, the office, the library, there should be tutors appointed that are now taking through there should be classes you know even in classes there should be textbooks in the library with ai most of these things would they don't need to be there what need to be there is just you know that okay structured curriculum it needed to be there and a person will be able to have access to different you know materials you know online and they will prompt the system and after that prompt they will be able to have access or redirection to specific you know, materials that are relevant to their learning styles and also their learning gaps in terms of the skills that they possess. Mm -hmm. So therefore, this is where institution of higher learning, they need to tap on the use of AI in teaching and learning. No, I have to put it the other way around because I'm coming from the field of higher education, the, the, the field of learning and teaching. Because, you know, it is the learning that takes place first before, you know, teaching actually take place. We need to tap on this thing because it will cut on the costs. It also, you know, improve the efficiency within which we are delivering, you know, education. And if we are using it responsibly and ethically with integrity, then we are likely to improve the quality of service and the delivery of services to our clients. Dr. Shiomeka, finally, what do you hope, you know, policymakers, educators, or uh, even the ordinary citizen takes away from your message, both from uh, your keynote in Tanzania and from your broader work as Namibia's uh, new media ombudsman? One thing since my office, the office of the media ombudsman, if I have to speak from that context first, from that side first, is response is, you know, I am serving as a public protector and i am also would like to see people you know being accountable for whatever that they are doing either you know digitally or offline for example in this case i would like to say we should be accountable for whatever that we are feeding ai with the data that we are feeding AI with, we should be accountable. And also we should do these things without any bias. And the developers of AI, they should, you know, do things, you know, without any bias and they should develop AI with the people, not for the people. Mm -hmm. They should not misrepresent certain scenarios, be it culture or traditions or any political, you know, situation. They should just, you know, feed the system with the right information. And as an educator in general, I would like to urge, you know, institution of higher learning to ensure that they tap on this AI and they should continuously look for relevant and, you know, uh, protect also the data for their students or for people who are accessing these specific, you know, uh, tools. Because these tools, you know, they are really, people are really giving away their data 
personal data without knowing maybe probably how they are going to be used uh, elsewhere. And the citizens, you should be cautious, you know, on which specific AI tool to use, how to use it, what type of content do you want to see, and how do you want to use it, and in what way will it help you professionally. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we should have integrity in whatever that we are doing, Nina. Dr. Shiomeka, it was lovely speaking with you. Thank you so much for your time and joining us this evening on the Daily Roundup. Thank you so much and see you soon when I'll come back home. I am still in Tanzania. Thank you. Well, that was uh, Dr. Shiomeka joining us there virtually from Tanzania. We're going to take a